And gentlemen, welcome back to CK3, a Game of Thrones. Basically, House of the Dragon. Continuing from uh, Aegon's conquest, we are alive. Aegon died at the age of uh, 50, uh, weirdly drinking wildfire. That's not canon, he died of a stroke. Or maybe he did die of wildfire. Maybe he did go insane. The entire time rambling about the prophecy of ice and fire and about ice zombies, and then one day he just drank wildfire, and he was like, it's it's part of the prophecy. It is part of the prophecy. And he's just like, Dad, no, don't do it, Dad. And King Aegon was just like, I'll drink it, you but I'm the conqueror. I must fulfill the prophecy. And then he drank fucking wildfire and died, but they all just told everyone, yeah, he had a stroke, just because they didn't want people to know that the conqueror was completely mental. That is now canon, ladies and gentlemen. It's now canon. Good luck with that. So... With the passing of Aegon, his eldest son inherited, but his rule was littered with religious strife, as the Faith of the Seven was not happy when young Aegon the Uncrowned married his sister wife, Reyna. The two married, despite the Faith's protest. Things only escalated when Prince Maegor married not one, but two women. Citing that Targaryens were more gods than men, he ignored the Faith and did as he pleased, eventually becoming exiled by his own brother. Returning now, on the eve of his brother's death, to claim the Iron Throne for himself. The realm is in turmoil, ladies and gentlemen. The Faith Militant has risen up. It's the best representation I could have for the Faith of the Seven, is the Reach rising up in rebellion. And the Tullys as well, because the Tullys did in the, uh, hidden canon support the Faith Militant, so, yeah. Speaking of the Faith, while, uh, young Prince Aegon and his sister wife, Reyna, were touring the country as their grandfather had once done as future heirs to the crown, Aegon and his sister were besieged at Craig Hall by Faith Militant. That indirectly caused their father to have a heart attack and die back on Dragonstone, assuming that his children were in fact dead. In truth, the Lannisters of Casterly Rock more or less saved young Aegon and took him to Casterly Rock for safety, where the boy has since been slowly gathering support in the West. Though he has not yet called his banners to him, he, uh, he remains vigilant, summoning support from across Westeros. And whispers begin to reach Maegor's ear about how the boy is in contact with the Starks of Winterfell and the Arons of the Vale, who refuse to join his side until young Aegon starts to win some battles to prove himself. For now, at least, King Maegor is unaware of his nephew's actions, plotting in the West and gathering support to his cause, far too distracted with the religious uprisings throughout the realm, and finally sick and tired of dealing with it. So. King Maegor the Cruel jumps upon the back of his dragon, Belera on the Black Tread. I like the fact that, uh, King's Landing isn't fully built yet, it's just Maegor's Holdfast. Come back, come back here, come back. Bad Tyrell. There we go. Hello there. Or Paramount Fion, the White Rose, soon to be the Crispy Rose. Third Rose. Maegor made more or less short work of the Faith Militant, but the unrest was spread so much across his entire realm that he never did quite crush the uprisings. They happened everywhere, all over Westeros at the same time. And a dragon can only be in one place at any time, so. The Faith Militant was honestly as big of a threat as it was simply because it happened everywhere. Like, all across Westeros, they were just everywhere, all at the same time. It wasn't like you were fighting one unified army. You were fighting the very population of Westeros itself. Ultimately, Maegor would spend the majority of his reign going back and forth from around the Reach and dealing with the High Septum's nonsense, being called an abomination by the Faithful, as a thousand mini-rebellions popped up throughout the realms under the Faith's banner, the warrior sons with their rainbow cloaks and mirrored shields, cutting down any and all who dared to not support them, more or less. It's kind of like the left. All the while, King Maegor cut himself in the Iron Throne a few thousand times because he was unfit to rule, or so the rumors say. Even during the reign of King Aenys, where some of the Faith once scaled the wall of the Red Keep to try to kill the king in his own bed, which ultimately caused the royal family to move their court back to Dragonstone for a time, before the uh, before the holdfast of King's Landing was actually built, which is where the late king died, leaving his son Aegon to succeed him, if not for Maegor's usurpation of the throne. Speaking of the young prince, however, as Maegor, his uncle, went to the Reach to quell rebellion, leaving the capital behind. Aegon snuck into King's Landing with his sister wife and a few loyal men, not to take the throne, as he knew he did not have the men to seize it for long. Aegon and his sister instead snuck into the dragon pit to liberate Reyna's dragon Dreamfire and claim for Aegon a dragon of his own, Quicksilver, the dragon of his father, the late king. Successful in their dragon heist, the two fled the capital and returned back to Casterly Rock, where those loyal to Aegon awaited him. In canon, ladies and gentlemen, 
Lord Lannister did not openly support Aegon. He sent his bastard son along with some men and a couple of his banner men to help him out. But ultimately, the lords and ladies of Westeros were not entirely confident that Aegon could win. He had very little support, in part because of how fearsome and terrifying Megor the Cruel was. Riding the, uh, riding the Conqueror's Dragon, the Black Dread, he was an imposing figure and many doubted that Aegon had a chance against him. Telling the boy that he had to win a victory and prove himself if he expected the support of the lords. They would not, after all, want to die for a hopeless cause. So, in order to gain the support of his lords, Aegon the Uncrowned needed to achieve a victory. To prove to the lords of Westeros that he was, in fact, his grandfather's son, Aegon the Conqueror Reborn. So he set out from the west and the safety of Casterly Rock and made his intentions known, claiming the Iron Throne as is his birthright. The only question is, who the hell is going to join Aegon? Because I don't think anybody really likes Megor, so... <laughs> That's a question. Who who will join him? Who will join the boy? We might be able to win this, I don't know. But my, my thing is, you know, we're going to have the advantage in numbers, but not necessarily the advantage in dragons, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, this will be interesting. Actually, yeah, Rhaenyra was a bit of a slut. But she liked the fairer sex. Yeah, Magor has Blackfire, and uh, my brother, Jaehaerys, is in Storm's End. But I don't think the Baratheons are getting involved. No, they are. The Baratheons have sided with me. Yeah, the Baratheons have sided with me. Dawn is neutral, because Dawn's Dawn. I think, other than Tully, the Tully is neutral. The Arons are with me, and the Starks are with me. Basically, every little paramount. Is the fucking Ironborn with me? Yeah, no. Everyone hates Megor. But Megor has Balerion the Black Dread, which is greatly concerning. We will march, ladies and gentlemen, on to Harrenhal and face my uncle and his forces. Follow the king! Follow the king! Follow the king, lads. Meet up with the Arons. Group up our forces at Harrenhal. Because the freaking Harrenhal is also with us. Everybody is with us. But the issue is that Magor is extremely fucking powerful and very scary. And he's coming this way. Come here, Magor. Instead of waiting for you to come to Harren Hall, I am coming to you. Uncle! I've come for you, Uncle! Face me, you coward! He is gonna kill me. If we get a Dragon Jewel versus frickin' uh... Frickin' Magor, we are so dead. But we do outnumber him. We outnumber him, like, drastically. It's just a matter of whether or not Aegon the Uncrowned can actually win against Megal. Because, yeah. I will march on the Red Keep. March on Megal's hold fast. Justice is on our side! Surely, that is enough! Surely, everything will be fine! Probably. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I stand outside the walls of King's Landing, my dragon Quicksilver at my side. Our men surround the holding. Da -da 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 -da. King Megal and his dragon Balerion are here. Megal! Come out and die. We are so fucking dead. We are so dead. Baleron is just fucking beastly. Way too beastly. I see him barely take off from King's Landing as I dive towards them. Es escaping Quicksilver by better Talon. Our chance to swift victory is dashed. Baleron King Mago, the Iron Throne Circle, and prepare for next pass. The dance is afoot. Mago tried to shake our resolve with jeers and insults, and though the provocation is a futile effort, Seems to have gotten to Quicksilver. Did Megor just intimidate a dragon? A meticulous well placed attack with no room for errors. Very high increase. Uh, if I if I do this. Father, mother, smith, maiden, stranger. It worked. Hey, look, the fucking text is black. It's 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 a miracle. Look at the size difference. Look at the size difference in this image. Jesus. This is brutal. Uh, we circle tightly, claws raking and teeth sinking in with a surgeon's precision, leaving torrents of flame just barely missing King Megor of the Iron Throne on his saddle. King Megor and Balerion came in close, executing a claw strike that quick bite on Quicksilver, before turning to burn me a dragon flame. Uh, Quicksilver and I are completely unharmed by Balerion and I've seen no words for the wear. I can feel the sweat on my brow and fear we are losing the fight. You opt for a, a highly defensive posture, trying to minimize damage. I feel like this is the bad option. I feel like being on the defensive against the Black Dread is not a good idea. No, we're alive. Our wings tucked in. We repelled each bite and claw. The sound of snapping teeth reverberating in the air. 
Valeron let out a bout of flame and frustration. Our assault was only met with hard exterior of their armored scales. Each strike a fruitless endeavor. Quicksilver let out a burst of flame and frustration. Quicksilver completely unharmed. While Valeron and King Mercy know us were fair. I feel the sweat in my bowels. We all fear that we are losing. Rope them to pieces. Ooh, an all-out attack. Sacrificing defense for offensive. High increase the thing. Fuck. Fuck. Ah, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? <laughs> I don't know. Because this, this is the entire war, ladies and gentlemen. If we lose with... If we win, then I automatically get the Iron Throne. So, yep. Yeah. And I don't want to save scum. I'm not going to save scum this. So you get, you get what you get. What happens, happens, boys. What happens, happens, and determines what we do with the rest of the video. Because if we win, Aegon is going to be the crowned, and we'll have to solidify his rule. If we lose, Magor's going to kill a lot of people. Oh, full speed ahead to victory? I don't know about victory. Highly defensive, trying to minimize damage. Fuck, we'll, go, we'll go with that. It worked? Question mark? Are wings tucked in, repelled, dragon flame, are we completely unharmed? Fear we are far from victory. Fuck. Remove calculated. Yeah, every strike. Precise! Fuck me. I'm dead. Yep, that's 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 bad what I expected. <laughs> Aegon the Uncrowned. Forever uncrowned. Uh, any sense of grace and elegance, King Maelor dives Beleriand straight for us. Though Quicksilver tries to evade and then raises her wings in defense, each is torn through by the tooth and claw. Quicksilver roars in anguish as a wing is ripped off. But Beleron doesn't let go, continuing to rip and tear. With a whip of her neck, she gets a ferocious bite on Quicksilver's neck. And after a final cry, she rips his head right off before my eyes. No! You can't! Please! Both devoured. Shit. So, we now play as King Magor, defending the Red Keep from the scumbags. It may actually be easier said than done, even with Beleron. Oh, Sky Ambush, what's this? Oh, it's Prince Jaehaerys. I am bursting the force of Lord Garen and Ashes for the Battle King's Landing rages below me. When a second bout of flame bursts through the sky. <gasps> it's Jaehaerys, the Conciliator. He has come. It's not canon, but it's happening. <laughs> I feel Beleron... I mean, none of this is canon. Uh, Aegon died at Harrenhal. But I feel Beleron dive underneath me. Torrents of flame soars above my head. Looking up, I see the dragon Vermifort fly over me with surprising speed. His rider Jaehaerys glaring down at me with murderous intent. He wants a fight. Then he will have one. Aaron and I die lower, the Battle King's landing raging below. Now smoking field, I see Jaehaerys astride Vermifort. Roaring loudly as they charge directly towards us. Kick of my heels spurs below. Rap rapid ascent of the Diadbo strike. Yeah, I don't feel like Megalore does anything but just fucking attack! Just attack, attack, attack! So, attack calculated? No. Strike them. Dove like a falcon, claws and teeth outstretched, a quick rake across Vermifor's back, followed by a bout of flame left burning gashes. Jaehaerys and Vermifor move expertly through the sky, forcing us to never relax and constantly move. Completely unharmed, sporting superficial wounds, I sense Viserys' failing confidence. I just killed his brother. Quick them alive, you engage the enemy front on with full force of your fire. Yeah, that sounds like a Megor thing to do. Our flames intertwined in a deadly dance, but ours came out stronger, searing through Vermifors and scorching their wings. They tested our flanks, raking below on side and forcing us to spin in the sky to avoid exposing ourselves. A probing move, no doubt. Our only lightly wounded, while Vermifor sport in superficial wounds, I sent Jaehaerys' failing confidence. I ripped them to pieces. Defensive? No, we don't do defensive. Is that big lizard competence? I'm going to taunt. I am going to taunt. Vermifor. Verbally taunt Vermifor. Our taunt seems to hit the mark. Vermifor is lashing out, picking up our master's fury. The loss of focus may allow us an opening strike. Valeron's fangs skidded off Jaehaerys' guarded position. Her roar echoing my frustrated fury. With a roar and a rush of heat, I feel Valeron sweep all the way for the opposition. Her open gullet sprout a single giant plume of flame towards Vermifor and Jaehaerys. Too close to avoid, too large to block. With a rush of satisfaction, mirroring the rush of wind consumed by the conflagration, I see Vermifor and Jaehaerys incinerated. How do we lose still, though? I mean, we'll regroup, because fuck you, but still. I don't know, Jaehaerys had a son. Yeah, no, not Aegon. Aegon had a... a stillborn, really fucked up boulder. It's, uh, Jaehaerys that had a son before he died. 
Interesting. I'll change that name later, but for now, it will do. Because uh, Magor's going to limp back to Dragonstone, basically, a top of on, and I'm uh, I'm going to go end this. We're going to fucking end this, let's. Damnations have been excommunicated. Well, fuck you, Faith of the Seven. Hey! I mean, I, I made Magor, like, sterile, because he had real trouble in the canon getting kids. But he actually has a, he has a child. There is actually a child being born. This is a miracle. Because uh, in the canon, Magor basically... The reason he ended up with, like, fucking six wives is the fact that he, he couldn't get any of them pregnant. But yeah, we're, uh, we're gonna go sail around and pay a visit to Castle Rock, ladies and gentlemen. Because the treacherous rebels can't fight for a claimant if the claimants are all dead. Down before the walls of Castle Rock, my dragon below on up my side, our men surrounding the holdfast. Naught to be left, but ash and ruin. Familiar Kingslayer dynastic. I killed that one, but not this bitch. Because it's the way Ma Ma the way Magor sees it is they can't fight for a claimant that's dead. So, yeah, it's just gonna slowly have to kill all fucking claimants, burn the West to like fucking complete ash. Alasane is in charge now. Yeah, as far as Magor's concerned, his wife's pregnant, so it's 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 fine. He doesn't have to worry too much because he's inheriting it all anyway. West's claim of the Seven Kingdoms has ended. Yeah, I know, yeah, basically, she's surrendering. Which is what, uh, what Reyna did originally in the canon, is she surrendered herself to Magor and ended up marrying him. I'm pretty sure Magor's probably gonna marry the Queen Alicent girl. My, his niece. And then they'll, they'll breed more dragons, lads, it'll be fine. But yes, the war is over, the usurpers have been brought to heel, and Magor is undisputed ruler of Westeros. Son of a bitch! Fuck! I'm sorry, my lord. Your son is... It died. The kid died. Mango, Mango, Mango's gonna kill the bitch. Mango, Mango's gonna kill the bitch. He's gonna kill this bitch. And he's gonna marry the Targaryen girl. That's what he's gonna do. He's gonna kill the bitch. Yeah, you guys thought I was kidding. But no, he killed her. He, he killed her. He absolutely killed her. It was her fault. God damn it. He was going to have an heir. He killed all those Targaryen whelps because he was confident that his wife was gonna give him as an heir. And she failed. And now there's only two Targaryens left. <laughs> so, you know, my niece better be in good. She's called the good. She better be good. <laughs> so, uh, Megor's gonna make a big spectacle out of it, ladies and gentlemen. Big, huge spectacle. Massive wedding. Everyone's gonna in come up and come to the wedding, or they're gonna burn. That's what's gonna happen. And then they're gonna burn afterwards anyway, because Megor is pissed. Oh, soulmates. I, I find that hard to believe. <laughs> I find that very hard to believe. To be perfectly frank, she's got a... What's it called? When the kidnapped woman falls in love with the kidnapper. Stockholm Syndrome. The last hope of the Targaryen dynasty rests in Magor by managing to knock this girl up. Well, that was surprisingly easy, actually. It looks like Magor's, uh, Magor's not that bad. He does have infertile, but is... Apparently still capable of popping out kids. Hopefully it's not a it's not a dud, lads. Hopefully it's not a dud. Because the Targaryen dynasty is desperate. And if she doesn't start popping out kids, Magor's gonna have to start shagging everything that moves. A son! Ladies and gentlemen. Ha ha! Excellent stuff. Babe curled on her arm, gazes at me mine, her eyes full of loving devotion. My love, let us name him Magor after you. Uh, that's a terrible idea. She has Stockholm Syndrome so bad. Poor girl. No, we will name him Magor. But yeah, since uh, Maelor now has a son, I don't. It, uh, he might probably more get more kids. I don't know. We'll wait and see. But uh, I think we're going to wrap this up more or less here. Megor has secured the realm. Everyone is too goddamn frightened of him to do anything. The North kind of hates his guts, but like the Vale is too fucking terrified of him to do anything. The reigns of Castle Rock uh, or Castle Ruin, as the case may be, like him because they gave him the stuff. But, uh, yeah, everybody else is too fucking terrified of him to do anything. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. I don't think anything will. I'm, I want to see if Maelor gets more kids to secure his line or not. Having skipped ahead a few years, ladies and gentlemen, all hail King Aegon III, the Abel of the Iron Throne. Having held the realm together in the, uh, after the death of his father, King Maegor the Cruel. Maegor actually had one, two, three, four sons. His eldest, Aegon, uh, Magon, uh, Aenys, interestingly enough, the Mad Dragon, after his brother, and Vagon, 
who's betrothed to a Valorian girl. The most interesting is the fact that Aegon is actually married to a Greyjoy girl. <laughs> All in all, though, the Targaryen lineage is secured. Surprisingly, Maegor had plenty of kids, even though he was sterile. I try to mimic the fact that Maegor had, historically, was basically barren and just couldn't have kids. Allegedly. There was one man that claimed that he was, in fact, Maelor's bastard son. So, at any rate, ladies and gentlemen, we'll wrap that up here. This was just supposed to be the, uh, the Faith Militant Uprising and Maegor's struggle against that and... I tried to, to crown the uncrowned, but uh, that did not go well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll move on because I got a lot of stuff to do and I'm very busy. There's plenty of stuff to come. I want to do all of the dragon seeds. I want to do something with nettles at some point and do nettles for some justice. I want to play as House Rogar. Rogar? Rogare? Yeah. The, uh, the, the Bank of Lease. I want to play as those lads and make them dragon riders at some stage. I want to play as these guys, the Coheres. Coheres? Just the, the, the first Lords of Harrenhal, basically. I want to play as them at some point. Uh, I also want to play the... During the Dance of Dragons, the uh, the True Fire claimants. True, true. The True Fire, I suppose. Uh, I want to play as Dayron. There's just so many. There's just so many options and so many things to do with the dragons that it's endless. So yes, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we'll, uh, we'll wrap this up here. I thank you all for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, click on the buttons, as if you don't know, they're there. And I will see you guys in the next video. That is all for now. Thank you for watching. Soul out. As you can tell, I'm, I'm getting sick. So, yeah, that's the thing. I'm